back, Sheldon. He's only a few minutes late. Okay. Professor Proton was never late when he was on TV. You know, every day, four o'clock, he was there. <laughs> uh, unless tornadoes were ripping apart East Texas, in which case we'd join him in progress. <laughs> For now at least, New York and LA-based fans of The Big Bang Theory and other hit CBS programs can keep watching these shows. Uh, last night, after lengthy negotiations reached a deadline that led Time Warner Cable to announce that it would be pulling CBS program from its lineup because it couldn't accept the network's fee demands, the two sides later appear to have at least agreed to keep negotiating before a CBS blackout hits 3 million viewers. Joining me to give us the lowdown on the high stakes negotiations between these two media giants and what it means for viewers like us is Shalini Ramachandran. Good morning, Shalini. Good morning. So, um, what is the latest? This seems like uh, it was a bit confusing yeah. last night. Latest was, was a comedy of errors, basically. <laughs> so, uh, the, actually, at 5 p.m. was a deadline yesterday. And then they kept extending uh, the deadline so that a blackout wouldn't happen. And then suddenly at midnight, there was a statement from both sides talking about a blackout. And then uh, shortly after, after they said that they'd extend the deadline till Friday, so we can still we know that we're keeping CBS on Time Warner Cable till then. It depends on where your favorite show falls in the week, whether or not you're <laughs> going to be frustrated by this process, though, right? Right. Well, the thing is, we we figured that because they were extending the deadline by such short increments, they were close to some sort of a deal. Mm. But then it seemed to have fallen apart late at night. So I mean, it, it's it, this is not the first of these. We've had numerous of these knife-edged, you know, eleventh-hour negotiations between right. uh, content providers and and cable stations. What's it telling us about the current environment in, in the well, media Well, basically world? programming costs are putting huge pressures on the business for the cable operators. And on the other side, broadcasters have historically not been paid because they're free over the air. So CBS and ABC, those sort of stations. But in recent, in the past several years, they've wanted to be paid too. And they look at networks like ESPN that are getting paid handsomely, which are cable, sta cable networks. And they also want to be getting paid. And that, that has been one of the biggest drivers of costs for the cable and satellite operators that uh, serve the customer's television. But on the other hand, for the broadcasters, it's extremely important, this new stream of revenue. So, they, and this is as the entire market of pay TV has become mature, the business isn't growing as it used to. So that's why these negotiations are getting so, so much more intense. Well, mature is one way to describe it, but also sort of racked by new competition is the other, right? I mean, right. we're talking about Netflix and streaming operations. How does that play into both sides' positions on this? Both of them are challenged by Yes, by I mean, like web Netflix. video is a huge part of these negotiations now and we saw last year uh, Viacom went off DirecTV systems for nine days and a big part of that that DirecTV kept saying was Viacom had had sold a lot of its back-end programming to Netflix and other places so when Viacom was blacked out they just told viewers you can get it online at these places you don't have to worry about you know getting it if don't switch to another provider because you can find it online so it's becoming a point of leverage actually mm. for the, the distributors. The, the CBS now seems under the dome and these sort of big success stories is now negotiating to release them fairly early yes. after they're, they're showing, right? What does that mean? Well, I mean, it's it's a, a, basically they're putting themselves out there. They want to be getting revenue streams from everywhere they can, right? So Amazon is another place they can get money from. Um, but that that means they're, they're putting themselves in a strange situation with distributors who say, well, if I'm going to be getting paying you for under the dome, how come viewers are going to be able to see it four days later? Yeah, well, I'm not so sure about this idea that we viewers are going to get destroyed by these negotiations given that how much choice is out there right now but it's it's interesting stuff nonetheless. Yeah. Chalini, thank you very much for your time.